Hello and welcome to the battle for Middle Earth 1 cast on a beautiful map Anorian. Today we are going to cast a 2v2 replay on the patch 1.03. At the bottom right side of the map, we have the blue Gondor player boss on you. His ally at the top right side is the blue Mordor player Sonic and Tails. They are against the grey Mordor player Explit, uh, Explicit Content. And his ally at the bottom left side is the yellow Isengard player Elite Spy. So we have Isengard and Mordor against Gondor and Mordor. Should be a good matchup for the Gondor-Mordor team. Why? Because the combination of good and evil is always better. Since the good faction can offer you as an evil faction player what you cannot have. And that is sustain and more sustain. Warden is going to be used defensively and that's the thing, you know. Because now what Isengard play is doing is he is actually trying to catch those Gondor soldiers before they can reach out to this side. However, during all this time, the Mordor player is going to be kind of untouched. Elf Sauron was, uh, I mean, Elvin Wood was used to nullify the effect of the Warchant. But once the soldiers are going off the land, they should still not be able to fight against the Uruks. Tainted land will be used, but you need to be careful about that, because the Mordor player at the top right side might also be able to cover this Tainted land. And also, that's going to be his plan. Okay, so once again, it was like we have seen three different lands. The first from the Gondor player, the Elvin Wood. Then the Grey Mordor player covered the Elvin Wood with the Tainted Land. But then again, the Blue Mordor player covered the existing Tainted Land <laughs> from the opponent Mordor player. But look at this, you know, that's something we don't see very often in 2021, 2022. Normally, Gondor is the one who is putting pressure on Isengard and not the other way around. We will get some more Urukai on the field in the meantime from the Uruk pit. That's a very interesting off-meta um, opening from the Isengard player. Once again, guys, that's a really old replay. And I, you know, personally like to cast those replays from expert players like Butterfly, who is one of the best, if not the best player ever in the Battle for Middle Earth 1 scene. The farm is going to be taken down. Unfortunately, Butterfly is not being online for a really long time. That's what actually kind of makes him to a legend because... When you stop the game at your prime, people will keep still talking about you all the time. And that's a very um, bad choice from the Gonzo player. But once again, maybe the meta back in the day, like it's been now, what, 14 years ago, was like that. The Mordor player has three untouched mills under his control. With that being said, he should be able to grow his resource income like crazy. And what you can do and what you should be doing in this matchup as Mordor when your ally is Gondor and you are against double Eisen, uh, double evil like Isengard and Mordor, like in this situation, you want to build multiple orc pits. Orcs are for free, even on the patch 1.03. So just spam them all the time. And the reason why we are casting this replay is because we are not done yet with the patch 2.22. The, the launcher will be released very, very soon. And after that, we will also be hosting tournaments for Battle for Middle of 1 in 2022 with a brand new content. So stay tuned. And if you guys enjoy the commentary videos on this channel, please let me know in the comment section down below. And also by leaving a like on this video. Likes are helping quite a lot. Thank you so much in advance. Uh, the mill has been taken down. Look, unbelievable how much work he was able to put with like one or two rooks. That's kind of crazy. Uh, but this could also backfire quite easily. If Gondor would ignore the Uruks and just lead forward to destroy the Slammer Mills, it would be a full, whole different situation. Trust me on that one. But he was choosing to defend himself. So they are actually playing quite defensively. Double Orc Pit. I don't like the positioning. I like the positioning being in the middle. This way they can come out faster. And move to the opposite side of the map a bit faster. Also this model player has two, you know, two Orc Pits. But also the same situation here. I don't like the positioning of this Orc Pits. Not even a little bit. Looks like he wants to creep with the, with the help of Gollum. Uh, who is this actually? Uh, it's like a... Okay. So it's the grey model player. Explicit content. Who is creeping offensively and i like that i really do many many more towers are building up um, which is not really needed in this kind of situations but it's fine ah, isengard has three furnaces we have now the stable up on the field for the first gondor knight is he's all about to enter the battlefield okay so uh, the orcs i mean the golem was doing a phenomenal job killing those workers and that's the least what you can do but it's better than nothing trust me on that one like dealing economical damage when it feels like it's impossible to destroy the Lumber Mill. What you can always do is try to kill the Lumber Mill workers. This way you can also hurt his economy big time. Because replacing those in the patch 1.03 is going to cost your opponent 20 resources. Which doesn't sound too crazy. But it is actually crazy because you will not do, you will not only be able to replace like one or two of them. You will eventually have to replace like 10 and that's like 200 resources. And if you don't replace them, 
the lumber mill is not gonna generate any resources for you. A beautiful trample into the Uruks. Nice one. And we will hear the sound of the Oryx all day, all night. Okay, this Isengard has only um, one tower, but it's fine because he has now Uruk Pikeman on the field as a counter unit to the Gondor Knights from the Gondor player, you know, boss owns you. Will boss own you or will you own boss? It's the, you know, one million dollar question, ladies and gentlemen. The mill in the front set is going to be taken down. This Mordor is kind of too scared. Sonic and Tails, more like Sonic and scared. We have now more, more pikemen, and that's what I'm talking about. In this matchup in 2022, if you ever play this matchup with your mates, and you are playing Gondor and Mordor, it's Mordor here at the top right side. You want to buy the middle cam as soon as possible. Why? Because there is nothing the opening team can do about. And after purchasing the middle cam, you want to build uh, three, four orc pits and spam orcs all day, all night. Why? Because orcs are the cheapest and one of the best counters to the Isengard pikemen. With them, you can put a lot of pressure on the Isengard pikemen. And this way, your ally, the Gonzo player, can keep killing those Lamry Mills all the time, which will eventually buy you so much time to recruit the Nazgul or even the Witch King from Engma. You know, and you will be able to deal with the trolls from the opponent Mordor player in no time. In this matchup, normally Mordor, who has Isengard as an ally, will go for the trolls because his goal is to get the Drummer Troll on the field as soon as possible as the drama troll is the best sports sportive unit in the entire game all right but you see he has orcs on the field however the isengard player is smart he's re recruiting those berserkers to deal with the orcs the mill has been taken down regardless but that's fine it's the first time ever he's losing the front mill he has now full base however because he was starting with the uruk pit he has not that much money at this point he need to definitely save up for the armory the middle camp has been purchased from sonic and teals that's the blue motor player at the top right side and Isengard keeps pressuring all the time. Ah, Wanna make sure that this Mordor is not gonna become a Bill Gates in 2022 by having infinite amount of resources. Three Orc Pits, but once again, the positioning is awful. I don't like this. Now you can also build more Orc Pits in the center of the map, which is much, much better. Why are you asking? Glad you're asking, because from the middle, reaching to this side or to this side at the top left side is, of course, much faster and easier. Two power points collected for Sonic Incredible. and Teals. Um, no, yeah, actually, yeah. He can now, um, he should be saving up the industry for the furnaces in the middle, but it's fine. It's not the end of the world. Gondor player has still not a full base. I mean, obviously, in this matchup, as Gondor, you have only one single farm outside, and this is this one. He was giving this, his second settlement to his ally. This way, the Mordor player could have a bit more money, but as the Mordor keeps losing this stuff all the time, it's not really beneficial. Troll was able to creep the work lane defensively, almost level 2. Elite Spy, that's the Isengard player, is asking for help, which is kind of okay, because he needs some sort of assistance from his ally to deal with the Orc spam from the opponent's model player, Sonic and Tails, who is now building furnaces in the middle camp. He's kind of poor because he has only, he has like three Orc pits and he kept losing those mills all the time. So investing 2000 into the middle camp and then filling it up with furnaces and towers is obviously gonna be kind of something expensive and if you can survive the first couple of minutes after you purchase the middle camp, you will be good to go. You will be golden. And Gondor cannot play the game at this point. You see what I mean? Like, what can Gondor do against such a reckless seed? The answer is little to nothing because he has either to fight against the Uruk pikemen, which is impossible, or even worse than that, the enemy mountain trolls, which is even harder. So he cannot do much. <laughs> Did you guys see that? <laughs> the Gondor Knights teleported from one location to another location. Oh my goodness, boys. In 28, 2008, 2007, when the servers were active, this game was hilarious. It was one of the best games. I mean, it is still one of the best games, but also it was active back in the day. It means you could get a game whenever you wanted. Like now, at this time, it's like 2 a.m. in Germany in the, in the middle of the night. There is little to nothing. There are like five people playing this game at this point, and it's so hard to get games done in multiplayer. And for that reason, I'm looking forward to finish the patch 2.22, with the new launcher and then we will be hosting lots of tournaments hopefully that's going to boost the activity of the game with your help we can do that and the best help you can provide us is just join the multiplayer scene and play games with us we need players more than anything else orcs were able to deal the pi uh, to deal with the pikemen great one and also killing pikemen will grant you lots of power points mordor now is building a siege works which is not the best call and let me explain why 
because in this matchup this mortar eventually gonna have like a nazgul or a witch king on the field and if you have nothing to protect your siege weapons they will be just free food he's building the troll cage too but what you need are either combos like cross um you know orc arches and orc combinations with fire and banner or you want to get witch king on the field first i personally would prefer witch king every day of the week because with the witch king you can help your ally to keep fighting for the map control because look what's gonna happen now he's slowed down and he will be losing the full gondor knight that's a really expensive unit nearly 800 however the gondor player realizing okay with gondor knights all alone i cannot achieve too much in this situation so he's going for a transition into the archer range and barracks he will need four units each of them to get it to level two in the patch 2.22 in the new patch you will only need three to get your barracks and archer range to level two Isengar in the meantime is building an army warfare of Mortar. He was already able to purchase the heavy armor. Now going for the fire upgrade next. They need to be fast. If they don't want to face against like 20 catapults at the same time. And catapults are hitting like a truck. You gotta trust me on that one. They will be crushing those combos. Especially the pikeman and crossbowman combo. This combination right here on, this, on the screen. Is the slowest combo in the entire game. So dodging the incoming shot from the Mortar catapult is going to be nearly impossible. Hey, be careful with the Gondor Knight. This Gondor is kind of poor, you know? Like, having only one single settlement outside, which is only level 2, not even level 3, is, you know, obviously you have like 5, 6 blacksmiths, but it's still not enough. You you know, at this point, the Mortar player should be giving at least one, if not two of his settlements to his ally. One, first catapult, industry has been used once again. The Mortar player obviously has to invest lots of money into getting some trolls, catapults, and eventually being able to save for the Nazgul, Witch King, boss on you. has 2,500 resources collected. Uh, he needs obviously heavy armor and banner. Banner is extremely important in this matchup. Why? Because with banner, you can get fear resistant for the units. If you don't get it, the enemy Nazgul's screech might mess you up big time. Fire all purchased, but heavy armor not purchased yet. They know they have like a land advantage, but that's not the case for a long time, I'm assuming. No, it's not the case anymore. Because Elite Spy, that's the Yellow Isengard player, has actually skipped the industry to get the Tainted Land unlocked instead. You will get some more units in the middle. Catapults, they are painful, they are annoying to deal with. But the Isengard player will definitely need the Drummer Troll from his ally next to his side. Which will grant 50% more damage and 50% more armor as well as 200 person combat experience which is again crazy the golem from the gray model player is providing a lot of vision control look at that he's able to see the archer range level 2 the barracks level 2 he has a lot of information which is going to obviously increase your reaction time the more you know the better it is and yeah he has no heroes he has no drummer troll he has no witch king i mean long story short he has little to zero you know experience nor damage or armor leadership on these combos and isengard combos are gonna one shot those counter combos in no time they have drummer troll they have the warchan they have the eye of sauron and later on they will also get the chance to get the witch king we have now the transition into the siege wars from the model player explicit content nobody is going for the witch king tainted land will be used to cover this boom and you will see what i mean like you see how slow they are how hard for them it is to get into the middle camp and back in the day and even now in 2021 2022 uh, people they have like a weird mindset they are like okay there is a middle camp we gotta attack this all the time no you don't have to do that you can just ignore the middle camp and go for the main castle instead i believe that's in this kind of situations a much greater choice because the as you can see the main castle has zero protection we have now lords on the field even though he's level one but don't get uh, you know <laughs> too distracted about the fact because he will get to level 5 for even more leadership in literally a few seconds if he stays close to the combos because passively leveling up like the sharing experience with the combos with 200 percent combat experience only from the drummer troll and then 100 percent also from the eye of sauron means that you get any hero you put next to the combos from level 1 to level 10 in like a minute but uh, giving time to gondor mordor might not be the the best call because now they have plenty of catapults and more will follow. The mortal player is so rich that he was even going for the orc archer combos. But again, that's like a waste of money. If your ally is going for the combos, you don't have to do that. A witch king would be a much, much better choice. And 
yeah what is the great what is the game breaking point in this matchup it's definitely the freezing ring from isengard the second freezing ring gets unlocked that means every leadership from the enemy team is going to be nullified and negated with that being said your witch king your drama troll your eye of sour on your tainted land your elven mood doesn't matter anything anymore and isengard can just run you down again the biggest enemy for the isengard player are those mortar catapults Um, the Gondor player is kind of poor. Like, let's take a look into his money. I mean, you can see he has not money at all. Like, yes, this combos have, was not even able to give them all the upgrades just yet. He's slowly but surely getting there. They are kind of camping in the middle and waiting to be ready. Waiting for the drummer troll, who is all about to join the battlefield. Now the troll kitchen level 2 industry has been used once again. This time, for whatever reason, on the slaughterhouses. Maybe to level them up to level 3 a bit faster. Because if you don't know, giving, you know, industry on the slaughterhouse slash furnaces will also make sure that the st selected structures are going to level up a bit faster. However, you, you know, four is better than five, uh, three. So if you have to hit three, just choose the four instead. You get like 200 percent more. There is a troll. He was protecting this area. And Isengard is eventually saving for Saruman. Yeah, so Saruman is a great hero. And also gonna level up like crazy, even though he's a hero who unlocks everything with level 5. And that's the level he will be entering the battlefield in the first place. But I'm assuming his plan with the with the Saruman is to use the fireball repeatedly, like over and over again, to eventually kill all these catapults one by one. The fireball is enough to one-shot them. And uh, yeah, maybe that's the plan. Because for the warm tongue, you know, you need to get into the close range to the Gondor combos. And I believe that's like a bad idea because this gondor combos with this much leadership will kill your saruman in no time okay they are actually pinging out there is lurts and one pikeman and isengard is now as strong as possible he has two combos only he can obviously make more and more combos and i personally would always recommend to make this uruk pikeman uh, uruk and crossbowman combo over the pikeman and crossbowman combo because pikeman and crossbowman com combo the only good thing about them is the the counter factor about them being strong against gunner knights but that's all about it they are way slower and they are way squishier against enemy combos and uh, you know saruman can also use speechcraft over and over again if needed uh, this mortal is going finally for the witch king i believe they are also waiting for the nazgul or something because look his money he has nearly 5000 he has almost darkness available too for even more <laughs> leadership holy moly guys and also this mortal player sonic and Tears, is one power point away from getting the darkness unlocked and isengard is still far away like more than five power points from his freezing rain and gondor has nearly nothing collected uh, he's eventually gonna get faramir yeah faramir is on the field he's trying to show his quality once again also in the year 2022 <laughs> and now mordor gondor are making a move when you want to make a move with this army, you want to make sure that you split your catapults up a little bit, you know? You don't want to be grouped and clumped at the very first place, at the very same place, in which Fireball, which by the way has like a splash damage, might be able to one-shot more than only one of them at the same time. So now, ladies and gentlemen, we have the Witch King for 50% more damage and 50% more armor. The Drummer Troll, 50% more damage, 50% more armor, and 200% combat experience, and Die of Sauron. So basically, these three from Mortor all alone is going to give you 150% more damage, 100% more armor, and 300% more combat experience. That's awesome, am I right? <laughs> what is Saruman and Lourdes doing there? What are they doing? I believe they are looking for like catapults or something. But they, they need to move now. Okay. Oh my goodness. Like the Gondor and Mortor combination. I'm actually curious how and if they will be able to defend such a force. I don't know. But this army looks dangerous to me. He's using fireball on the catapult. <laughs> and you see, he was putting Lourdes close to it. This way Lourdes also was able to get experience from it. But now they need to bail. They need to go all the way up to the bottom left side. Darkness is going to be used from explicit content. It's the blue Mordor player. He's buffing the combos from his ally. His trolls and also his own combos. He has only one single drummer troll, which is something I don't like to see a lot. Uh, because you need more than that it, you know at least two because this way they can support each other and you know when one of them is dies so you have a second one to keep the leadership active all the time witch king don't witch king don't die witch king is gonna blow up trust me on that one like this is crazy amount of strength 
Screech is going to be used, but doesn't affect the units when they are level 2. It does affect them on the patch 2.22. But I mean, is shooting the buildings. And looks like Gondor just want to focus on the buildings, which is not the best call. Just fight the army. You can win that. You have Witch King advantage. Catapults are shooting. Oh, beautiful shots. But they have so much leadership, they don't even die. Saruman, Saruman, Saruman. He's pinging Saruman. Is he paying attention? Yes, he's paying attention. Saruman is going to be forced to disengage. Saruman is a game-winning and game-changing ch hero. The city has been taken down. Catapults, once again, clumped to each other. And Witch King, Witch King, Witch King. Witch King is going to blow up, but Saruman dies in the same time. I have Saruman will be used. Big fight, but losing the Witch King hurts. Now the trolls are charging in. I believe the Isengard Mordor team, they can actually defend this. More shots, while the cutters from the Mordor Isengard team are untouched. Faramir wasn't even close to the combos, but he is still level 5. The trolls are dying, but he has to take care of this catapults as soon as possible. And look what I'm talking about. Level 10 combo. Farami is gonna get blown up. Faramir, you cannot show your quality this day. The drummer troll has to be the focus from Gondor. He has to also kill the catapults. Lourdes is diving in with the carnage. Kill Lourdes. He's literally inside your army. What is this actually? Somebody was using something. Freezing rain has been used. Rohan allies will be summoned to kill those catapults. But it's too late. The entire army has been blown away and Gondor player was not paying attention. He didn't take care of this Lord who was nearly one shot away from getting killed. And the Rohirrim will be scared off from the screech of the Witch King from the Mordor Isengard team. Now, the counter-attack might hit like a truck. The Witch King has to get revived. Gondor has to invest so much money into reviving all these combos he has lost. And Farami also eventually has to be revived. Looks like he wants to save for the Gandalf, which is a bad call. Gandalf is a very powerful hero. However, uh, he's extremely squishy. It means whenever he will get shot by the Isengard combos with this insane amount of damage leadership, he will be blown up. He has no chance getting anywhere close if Isengard is paying attention. He will need some more Gondor Knights eventually to kill those catapults. But for now, the Isengard player is backing off a little bit. Eventually, want to make sure that his combos are healing up. And saving one single unit from a battalion is more than enough to recover them back to the full size once again after a couple of seconds or minutes. When you are a good faction player, it's even faster. And that's what I'm talking about. You see the Witch King is doing a phenomenal job killing those catapults left and right. And the Moro player is falling apart. He has lots of trolls being AFK behind the bees. They are doing absolutely nothing. And I cannot even blame this Gondor player. He will definitely need more money if he wants to make something happen. Because let's talk about it. Like one archer plus one soldier will cost you 370 only, right? And then you need to invest for each upgrade 360. So 360 for banner, 360 for fire, 360 for heavy armor, right? So let's round it up a little bit. Let's say this is a thousand, right? A thousand resources plus 350 from the units. So, nearly 1,500 resources has to be invested into making one combo with upgrades. That's a lot of money if you have only one single settlement outside. That's why you will need more. Witch King is getting revived slowly but surely. I believe the Isengard player needs to make a move, but I'm assuming he's trying to wave, uh, wait for reviving Saruman. Saruman, the same situation like Gandalf, extremely powerful, but in this kind of situation, it's not the best call. Freezing Rain is still on cooldown, right? It's still on cooldown. So, ideally, you want to fight with the freezing rain against enemy combos. You know what would be mean and also kind of awesome at the same place? <laughs> if this Gondor player would demolish one of the blacksmiths and go for the Siege Forest. And get those Gondor catapults or trebuchet. They are hitting way harder. Holy moly. Alright, so the spam of Siege Weapons. And it was one of the dark days, I'm assuming, in the patch 1.03. Everybody was abusing the powerful Siege Weapons. And the problem with the Siege Weapons was not only their damage output, but also their price. And even the fact that if you kill them, you get nothing of that. Like, you almost get no power points. You almost not get any experience points from killing those catapults. And that is changed, ladies and gentlemen, in the patch 2.22. They are not only more expensive now, but also if you kill the enemy catapults or any Siege Weapons, really... You will get much more combat experience slash power points unlock from your spellbook. A wave of more the catapults are moving on. Look at them. Look at them, boys. Look at these orcs. They are celebrating. They are saying hi to you. Hey, you know. Are we ready to ramble? Are we, are we ready for the fiesta? Always ready for the fiesta, am I right? Catapult. Catapult, catapult, catapult. Witch King is healing up slowly but surely over time. Maybe get another Nazgul who you can, you know, kind of sacrifice. 
Witch King is extremely important for a leadership, but if you lose a regular Nazgul to kill a couple of catapults, it's fine, because reviving Nazgul's or the Witch King even is for free. However, it will take you lots of time. So losing Witch King is a bad thing, but losing a Nazgul for killing like two, three catapults is okay in this at this stage of the game. So we have now once again one, two, three, four, five combos in total for Gondor. Here's Faramir. Level 5 for additional armor and fear resistant leadership for the nearby allied units. We have a couple of orc combos from Mordor. I mean, he has so much money. I'm assuming, like, just stop making combos. Just save up for the, for the Nazgul's. Just, you know, he could have gotten those two Nazgul's on the field long time already. And again, you will now tell me, yeah, but Shanks, you are crazy. How, what can this Nazgul's do against such a reckless seat? And you are not wrong, but... Again, if you kill one, two catapults, it's more than enough. Saruman is moving on. He's level 6. Lord is level 4. Level 5 means even more and greater leadership for the Isengard combos. And the problem is that Gondor is so behind in terms of power points, you know? Fireball, boom, sun on your face. Freezing rain is available now for the next big fight. It means all the leadership bonuses from these combos is going to be negated. I mean, Mortor getting completely shut down. That's what it means. Like, what Mortor is doing in a situation like that is being a sportive faction. Both the Mortor players, as you can see and tell, are more like a sportive faction. They are providing additional armor, damage, and ex uh, combat experience leadership only to the allied units. And uh, what's the matter if the Freezing Rain is a counter, the biggest counter to that? And your trolls, your monsters, your combos, your allies combos, your allies horses, gun and eyes, or anything else everything else is going to be weak in compared to the Urukai. Remember, this is no rubble of mindless orcs. These are the Urukai. Their armor is thick. Oh, the darkness sound. Darkness. Okay, so they are making a move, ladies and gentlemen. They are making a move. We have one, two, three, four catapults in total up on the field. Uh, Witch King is joining the battlefield. Saruman offers leadership. Lourdes is going to offer leadership as well. Uh, two drama troll, I like to see that. This guy has even more than two. He has like four drama trolls in total in the middle of the map. This base looks undistractable, but is the Isengard model team gonna prove us wrong? That's the question. We will find out the answer very soon. Freezing Rain, he's holding it. Saruman is looking for a chance. If he gets the chance to steal oh the fireball, and you see what I'm talking about, one shot. Imagine him, you know, using the fireball on this catapult right here. He would have gotten all these three catapults at the same time. Okay, so big play. He's using the Freezing Rain. That's going to be an epic and fiesta fight. You got to trust me. All leadership has been negated, but the catapults are still hitting extremely hard. In the meantime, the model is sieging the middle camp. But we got to focus on the fight in the in the bot side. Gondor calls for eight, and Rohan will answer. The Rohan summon from the Gondor player. He's getting nicely into the back line. Warm Tongue has been used, and one combo has been stolen. But Saruman's run, Saruman, you fools. Run, run, run. One more hit. Saruman has been taken down. Faramir was showing his quality. The Nazgul is diving in to kill the catapults now. Faramir, the warning arrow is on cooldown. I don't know what's going on. It's absolute fiesta. <laughs> okay, the Katas are gone though. And Isengard has still a huge army. And that's what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. Do you see that? The Nazgul is doing a phenomenal job. All you gotta do in a situation like that is to kill those catapults, which is the only thing... At this stage of the game that can hurt the Isengard army. When Freezing Rain is active, these enemy combos, even the heroes like Nazgûl, Witch King or Faramir can't even touch and hurt these Isengard combos. Holy moly, and look at that, Lord is level 7. The only thing Isengard lost was Saruman and realizing the fact that they have no chance at this stage of the game, they will surrender and give up the game. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope this was enjoyable. If it was, please don't forget to leave a like, subscribe for more content like this in the future. And I will see you next time. Until then, keep hitting like a truck. And as always, stay beyond standards. Peace out.